To fully appreciate the work of the renowned Sarasota School modern architect, Jean Leedy, it's important to understand the times in which he worked, the needs of Floridians and of the country as a whole during the mid-20th century time period, and of the values that elevate the human condition through the built environment, enjoying life through architecture. The 1950s was a time of incredible change. Remember that up until 1949, there was an open cattle range in Florida. Beef cattle were allowed to graze and travel freely throughout Polk County. It's hard to believe that today, isn't it? But after World War II, things really took off. The nation's first destination theme park, Cypress Gardens in Winter Haven, became world famous for its water skiing shows, beautiful bells, and stunning plantings. It also attracted a whole range of celebrities, from Esther Williams, Betty Davis, to Carol Burnett and others. In 1956, Elvis Presley thrilled audiences with three performances at Polk Theater. Frances Langford, the actress-singer who grew up in Lakeland, became prominent during this time. The years between 1950 and 1957 were a happy time for Americans with an abundance of security and imagination. The war was over, older Americans had reliable income through the newly enacted Social Security program. American savings were now protected through the new FDIC. War veterans were given low interest, no down payment loans, which encouraged home ownership throughout the nation. In a way, Florida benefited the most from all of these federal programs. What better place to retire with your new income than warm, sunny Florida? And many vets who had trained during the war years at Polk County's vast network of Army, Navy, and air bases returned with their families. The Federal Highway Program that eventually resulted in Interstate 4 in 1958 truly opened up Central Florida to these new residents too. The population of Winter Haven, where Gene Leedy got his first architectural commission, increased fourfold from just after the war until 1955. Housing dominated the conversation just at the time when Jean Leedy graduated from the University of Florida in 1950 with a degree in architecture. Leedy immediately headed down to Sarasota, where the masters of a new modern architectural style were beginning to assemble. Paul Rudolph gave Jean Leedy his first start. Within a few years, and after a stint in the Air Force, Leedy earned his own first solo commissions. Winter Haven Sparrow Residence and the Cranny Speck Houses, the homes on Drexel Avenue Northeast that have recently been added to the National Historic Register. Jean spoke a lot about Frank Lloyd Wright. He spoke a lot about Rudolph, but he was particularly influenced by Wright. He told me he had a chance to meet him when Wright was doing Florida Southern College. He used to always pull out Frank Lloyd Wright's Wasmuth edition, which he was fortunate to have one of, copy of those, which I always wanted to get from him. Um, but he always talked about right in relationship of space, you know, again, connecting the interior and exterior space, the compression of space, honesty of materials. Those things really you can see in Gene's work. But Paul Rudolph, the architect whose inventive use of materials and groundbreaking designs 
who later led the Yale School of Architecture and who created a new American tropical style, also inspired Jean Leedy's work, especially regarding materials. Some of his early work, like his office building done in 1963, still beautiful today. The Sparrow House, uh, which is right across from the Dorman House, done almost 20 years apart. Totally different homes, you know, from a one-story post and beam, delicate steel building to a powerful multi-story pre-stressed concrete double T right across the street from each other, but equally powerful. Gene Leedy was a giant of Florida architecture. He was one of the leading practitioners of the Sarasota School of Architecture movement. And through him and through that movement, I was exposed to an array of amazing modern architecture. Modern architecture dating back to the 50s and the 60s, really the heyday of that uh, mid-century modern movement in Florida. And uh, you know, all of his ideas of space and structure just got uh, embedded in my head. So this house and many on the street were designed in the uh, mid-50s. I believe they were completed in late 50s, 57, 58. There is 10 total, and these are the Craney Spec Homes. And these are the homes that are just being celebrated now as part of a National Historic District. He did courtyard houses. Whoever listens to this, the one thing that he did was create courtyards so people could live outside, inside their home. And today, homes are objects. They don't have any courtyards, they don't have any enclosure, they don't have any privacy. Gene Leedy is a fabulous architect, a great man for Central Florida, for the state of Florida, for the United States. The Sarasota School of Architecture had four basic principles, as described by the architect and historian John Howey in his book, The Sarasota School. These principles were clarity of construction in the building's connections. In Leedy's Drexel Avenue homes, this meant exposed post and beams, and what Jean Leedy would say as an honest use of method and materials. Here you see the building's actual framing and the way in which the outbuildings connect to each other. It's very clear how these homes were imagined and constructed. Another Sarasota School principle was simple overall volumes penetrating vertically and horizontally, or what Jean Leedy referred to as floating over the Florida landscape. Flat roofs, straight lines, no curves, no unnecessary embellishment dominate this unique American modern style. And large sliding glass walls that allow the yard to become another room in these homes. Leedy was the first to use sliding glass doors as walls in Central Florida, and one large living, dining, and kitchen area blending seamlessly together without barrier walls. This was a radical idea in 1957, but has become another lasting legacy of this young, genius architect. Another Sarasota School principle was economy of means, that is, using common building materials elevated to important design features. Yeah, Gene did some amazing work, but even more amazing is where he accomplished it, you know, in Central Florida. I mean, he was a guy who took, you know, what other people would see as, you know, garbage, like uh, industrial 
pre-stressed concrete double T's that people use for warehouses and he turns them into poetry, you know, and, and to do that in Polk County is, it's, it's almost unfathomable that he was able to do that. And um, it showed not just his vision, but his ability to kind of see through that vision and to make others believe and connect them to that vision. Dick Cranny, the Bartow-based entrepreneur, wood fabricator, and real estate developer, who partnered with Gene Leedy on the Drexel Avenue homes, supplied most of the building materials, including the wood for framing, ceilings, and walls, and the cement block. Dick and Gene had a, a business relationship and social relationship in the years before Dick met Mom. And uh, Mom and Dick were married in 62, and Gene and uh, Dick were in business here in 56, 57. They were good friends. They would love this. Wish they could be here to enjoy it today. My memories were of a five and six year old coming to the neighborhood and playing with my cousin. Uh, this whole neighborhood was carved out of a grapefruit grove. And so I remember grapefruit trees and climbing trees and uh, having bologna sandwiches with my cousins across the street. There's a, a shot of um, my mother and I, she's bathing me in a little blue tub in the front courtyard. And I remember the original fences were wood. They were, uh, they were green, greenish wood uh, built along the front. So you had the front courtyard enclosed and it um, gave a nice sense of uh, privacy. Our friends that would come over and they were, would always think, oh, this is like, this house is really different, you know? It was so much different than what most people were uh, accustomed to. And it really, it's like you're in a, in a total oasis. And, um, you know, you have no, no idea you're in a suburban neighborhood in Winter Haven, Florida, you know? Uh, I mean, you could be in the Far East for all you know. It was Gene Leedy's use of common materials in uncommon ways that helped make these homes exceptional. Custom framing of the inexpensive paneling with a type of mahogany to set them apart. Elevating chipboard from a behind-the-wall material to prominent closet doors throughout the homes. Even employing pegboard to diffuse the harsh fluorescent task lighting in the kitchens. These were all simple design features that create big impact in these Drexel Avenue homes. And while only 10 homes were built on Drexel Avenue Northeast in 1957 in this new American modern style, they immediately earned the best home of the year by the then arbiter of good taste, Better Homes and Gardens magazine. And Jean Leedy also received the highest achievement award by the Association of International Architects. Over 60 years, Leedy transformed the landscape throughout Central Florida with even bigger, more major commissions. The famed painter Sid Solomon commissioned a huge beach house near Sarasota, the City Hall in Winter Haven, the Winter Haven Chamber of Commerce building, and hundreds of homes and other commercial buildings rose during more than half a century, with many sporting another Gene Leedy first, the use of concrete trusses to support roof structures, a powerful design effect. He inspired the nation's next generation of architects, some of whom trained under Jean Leedy. In high school, uh, my family moved to uh, Winter Haven, Florida. And, um, you know, I was a loved baseball. I played on the baseball team. And, you know, I again from a young age always want to be an architect and the first thing I did when I tried out for the baseball team was fielding fly balls and such in the outfield and <clears throat> you know high school field the ball gets hit over the fence on a home run I jump 
over the fence to get the ball and I saw this incredible house back there and it turns out it was a Strang house done by Gene Leedy and um, you know at that point I was determined to work for Gene Leedy uh, not really knowing who he was um, but uh, you know I thought he's a guy I want to work for and unbeknownst to me, Gene was a patron in my family's restaurant. So where I worked, and so after I found out that Gene would come in for dinner, I actually stored my portfolio in the restaurant in case he came in to impress him. Now you can imagine a high school kid with a portfolio trying to impress Gene Leedy. You know, Gene had a small office and I just went and sat at a desk in his office and told him I, I'm here, I'm working for you. And he said, okay. Um, and uh, I worked with Gene on and off throughout college and then right after my undergraduate degree, I worked with Gene. I also uh, helped build some houses for him um, in Boca Grande. Um, we stayed connected, you know, through many, many years ever since I worked for him and that was one great thing about Gene, you know, he was not just an incredible designer and visionary, but he loved the architecture and he loved people who loved it. So it was really easy to stay connected with Gene because there was always stories to talk about, about architecture and design. Um, I eventually uh, moved to California um, but prior to that, moved to New York uh, to work for Paul Rudolph. And uh, Paul Rudolph happened to be Gene Leedy's um, first employer. Strang family and the Leedy family were really close. Uh, I grew up in a Gene Leedy designed house in, here in Winter Haven and uh, again the families had a relationship and I, I knew Gene my entire life. In fact I remember playing on these uh, courtyard floors here as a kid and um, growing up uh, in Winter Haven High School his son Ingram and I were best friends so I spent a lot of time over here at the Gene Leedy house. And uh, later on in life, I decided I wanted to become an architect. Little did I know that I was getting an education my whole life just from being around uh, uh, Gene and his works here in Winter Haven. The, uh, you know, after graduating from University of Florida Architecture School, I came back here to Winter Haven and worked for Gene for a while. And uh, beyond that, I went and launched my own firm and always had a close connection with with Gene and, and the Leedy family. I first encountered their work at Gene Leedy sort of haphazardly. As, as a kid, parents and I went to Cypress Gardens and coming back or going, I don't really remember exactly, we, we sort of got lost in downtown Winter Haven and actually came upon this sort of, as a eight or nine year old, odd houses on Drexel. And I always remembered, wow, those were different than you know the house that you lived in in typical suburbia. 15, 20 years later, going through education, I met Gene at the University of Florida as he was a guest lecturer and gave a lecture and was a guest critic. And come to find out that those houses were actually Gene's houses. Um, began to really research Gene's work, 
his work with Paul, <clears throat> his transfer into Winter Haven and Polk County and, and what he was able to do in a fairly small rural community in the middle of Florida, uh, pretty miraculous. Gene Leedy lived in the first house he built on Drexel Avenue Northeast for the remainder of his life. His clients became his neighbors, and he not only curated their homes over 60 years, he curated his neighborly community too. He was truly the genius next door who came over for a scotch and conversation on a frequent basis. Didn't get to, to be as uh, close with him until the last eight years, but uh, so he would build these homes that the people loved and treasured so much, they called them their nest. And he did say he was a nest builder. And they call them their womb or their happy place. And the, the people that live on Drexel Avenue call it Leedy Land. Gene Leedy was such an extraordinary storyteller. He remembered everything about the past and he was so colorful the way he spoke. He, we called him Leedyisms, his sayings. He was called the ace, but he also called other people ace. So it's sort of its trademark to be with the ace. I know a lot of people call it mid-century modern architecture, but he liked to just call it modern architecture. And he believed everybody should be on board with modern architecture. Uh, Gene Leedy was a good friend of mine, as he was many people in Winter Haven, and I was a realtor. So I had an opportunity to list one of his large homes on the Lake Otis. Uh, Gene came along and showed me how to film it properly and make sure I had the proper angles and the beautiful photography. I was able to sell that house once and then later list it and sell it again. I had the the pleasure of having dinner with him in Gainesville and he, he gave me some advice which was to to value your work and he told a story about early in his career and, and he was struggling in Winter Haven and people were underbidding him and he went back to Paul, Mr. Rudolph, Paul Rudolph and Paul said well your fees aren't enough. He says I'm not getting work at the fees that I have. How can I get? He said, it's cause you're not respecting your own work to charge enough money for it. And that always stuck with me. And, and even after I graduated and later in my career in different social settings, he had asked me be later, you make sure you're charging enough for your work, right? And that's not to say that you should overcharge or be expensive, but it's just to know the quality of your time and that to make good work takes a lot of time and to take a lot of time might cost a little bit more. I always thought that was something that, that stuck. So you might, you might hear it from some other neighbors, some other homeowners on the street, but they said that Drexel Avenue, it's not just a neighborhood, it's a lifestyle. Uh, somehow these homes generate a camaraderie among their respective homeowners. And all of these neighbors would constantly get together for drinks and dinner and stories. And, uh, you know, it's exciting to see that camaraderie, you know, go on today. Today, Visitors to Winter Haven can experience the vast array of Gene Leedy's buildings through a town-sponsored audio tour. And there's another generation of cranny spec houses that have been developed by Gene Leedy and one of his acolytes, Max Strang, that are being readied for new homeowners. Upon Gene's passing, uh, in discussions with the Leedy family, uh, I indicated that you know perhaps there was an opportunity uh, to purchase the house, restore it, honor it uh, and use it as a way to spread awareness of these great little homes and Gene's career for that matter too. So uh, about six months ago um, with some like-minded investors we purchased a house from the Leedy Estate and we began um, fixing it up, uh, restoring it to the level that it deserved 
And moving forward, we really want to you know, have this house um, serve an educational, academic role, right? And have people come through the house and learn about the house, learn about the Craney Spec Homes. And uh, it's going to be, you know, it's a very passionate project for me because of, because of the connections and my memories here uh, as a young child. In the years before Jean passed away, we collaborated together uh, to come up with a, what we called the reissue project, right? Which is taking some of these same ideas from the 50s and 60s and adapting them for today, making these homes more sustainable uh, and reissuing them. The courtyard home plans that Leedy co-created with his protege, Max Strang, are perfectly suited to 21st century living with a more sustainable flat roof system, higher insulation values, and greater privacy through landscaping. But the ideas formulated and executed by the Sarasota School architects remain in these new courtyard home plans. So these homes originally started off as three bedroom, 1100 square foot homes. They're tiny, they're tiny. Uh, they're small homes, but they live really, really well. They live very spaciously. And there's some lessons in there. There's some lessons uh, from 50, 60 years ago that are telling us how we should be living today, how we should be living more sustainably, smaller footprint. And uh, you know, I think that's one of the exciting things about these homes is is how, how timeless they really are um, and how, how, we can, how we can learn from them even today. My dad was a, a modern architect and he was very um, into about the living space, bringing the outdoor inside and so these houses it made them feel like much bigger houses than they really were. And uh, it was just a simple design, they were um, inexpensive. Um, I believe this particular house, the Craney House, was published in uh, Better Homes and Gardens and you could actually buy the plans. Uh, for like five dollars I believe and so this this house was built across the entire nation in lots of locations There's a lot of people that will say they have a Jean Lydia house and find out that they actually bought the plans and built this house in another location uh, But this was the original spec houses in the 50s um, at the time. It was probably very uh, different um, But people have learned to recognize how important they are we hope through this project and uh, some of the other projects people are doing in this neighborhood that people will, will buy more of these Gene Lee houses and be in friendly hands and restore them and rehab and sort of show to the next generation, my generation, what sort of effect Gene had on architecture in our small town. And Gene Leedy would certainly welcome new neighbors to his neighborhood with his unique blend of conversation, good humor, and goodwill. He will forever remain Polk County's great innovator and renowned architect next door. Maybe the best way of expressing the influence Gene Leedy's architecture has had on those who have worked and lived in one of his buildings is that they remain, in the words of his dear friend and neighbor, Mary Frances Whittinghill, what she lovingly calls her happy house. Thank you.